Does Kevin have a gambling problem or something? Kevin definitely has a gambling problem. How bad? Very bad. He, he spends at least three days a week he's gambling. So it seems like Tasha K is in trouble again. And I'm like, what exactly is happening? So when I first saw this news, I was like, huh? What did she do again? Now, if you don't know who Tasha K is, Tasha K is like a commentary YouTuber. Um, I think she has her own website. She does interviews. She's like an, into um celeb culture and she does interviews. She um gets the news and she likes to break news as it is hot. And um I've known her for quite a while. I used to watch some of her videos back then. I used to watch it with also lovely TI. Those were my commentary YouTubers that I used to get all the 411. But I preferred lovely TI's um channel because I just liked her style of um breaking the news and discussing about the news. Um, but I knew I've known about Tasha K for quite a while. Recently, it has been said in the news that um, Kevin Hart is suing her for extortion and defamation. So it looks like comedian Kevin Hart is suing Tasha K for extortion. So almost a week ago, Tasha K did an interview with a former assistant to Kevin Hart that made a lot of damning allegations, including that Kevin Hart had a gambling problem, cheated on his now wife, Aniko Hart. Well, Kevin filed a complaint against Tasha K and his former assistant, claiming that the former assistant also signed an NDA, but we'll get to that in a second. First, he's claiming that Tasha K's people reached out to him back in November before she released this interview in December, December 22nd. According to Kevin Hart in this lawsuit, he states that this person asked for $250,000 in order for Tasha K not to release this interview. So Maisha Shakes, who was the former assistant to Kevin Hart, parted ways with him about three years ago. And apparently, not only did she sign an NDA when she was working with him, she signed an NDA when she stopped working for him, where he covered her health care and paid her $30,000 for three years. So that was $90,000 she ended up getting. So he's claiming in this lawsuit that she has gone against this contract. But it should also be noted, which is also noted in this suit, that Tasha K has been sued before and lost to Cardi B for $4 million, a story that we've been covering on our YouTube channel for over a year now. Well, they're claiming in this lawsuit that she has a pattern of this behavior. Nobody over there at Heartbeat is paying my salary, okay? It hurts either. Nope. <laughs> and when you don't pay, we have to get money by any means necessary. That is the moment that Kevin Hart and his attorneys refer to as particularly damning and say leaves no ambiguity that criminal extortion was Tasha K's intent. Tasha Kay interviewed Kevin's former assistant, Misha Shakes. And before the interview was released, Kevin claims that he was contacted by someone on Tasha Kay's team and they requested that he pay $250,000 to prevent the interview from being published. Kevin filed the lawsuit yesterday in Los Angeles against his former assistant and Tasha Kay. And it lists several actions. One, civil extortion. Two, breach of contract. Three, intentional interference with contractual relations. Four, invasion of privacy, public disclosure of private facts. And five, defamation. This interview between Kevin Hart's former assistant and Tasha Kay apparently happened sometime in November of 2023. And there were a lot of allegations thrown out in that interview about Kevin and alleged infidelity, gambling, all sorts of things. But this interview wasn't published until December 22nd, 2023. Kevin and his attorneys allege that the reason there was a gap between when it was recorded and when it was released is that Kevin was being, quote, extorted for $250,000 by Tasha Kay's team, allegedly, in order for the interview to not be released. So the attorneys sent a cease and desist to Tasha Kay. Kevin's attorneys claim that even after the cease and desist was sent, Tasha Kay still decided to release the interview, charging a $12 monthly subscription to view it. Here's an interesting part that was included in this lawsuit. So Misha, the ex-assistant, signed a confidentiality agreement when she worked for Kevin. She also signed a mutual release, an NDA, when they parted ways on October 22nd, 2020. According to this release and NDA, Misha's health insurance was paid for 36 months after she parted ways. She was also paid 
$30,000 for the next three years. So a total of $90,000. Obviously, Kevin and his attorneys believe that Misha violated this NDA when she did this interview with Tasha Kay. So they're requesting the $90,000 back, including any other damages. As for Tasha Kay, obviously this is not her first time at the rodeo. She was already found liable in a $3 million defamation lawsuit that Cardi B won against her. So if Kevin Hart ends up going to trial and winning this lawsuit against her, uh, I don't even know. Will Tasha Kay ever learn? The short answer is probably no. So according to the Neighborhood Talk and The Blast, it says that Kevin Hart is suing Tasha Kay for extortion after she allegedly told him that she won't release a damaging interview if he paid her $250,000. Now, The Blast was able to pull those court documents that Kevin Hart and his attorneys had filed. Now, in those filings, Kevin's legal team says that on November 22nd of 2023, they sent a letter to Tasha Kay regarding her recent and ongoing violations of civil and criminal law. The filings demanded that she immediately cease and desist all such activities, and it continued to say, and I quote, you are already engaging in criminal conduct and tortuous acts uh, that would entitle Mr. Hart to monetary damages against you you should he elect to commence civil litigation regarding this matter. To the extent that you do not cease and desist now, your liability for such monetary damages will increase, as will your exposure to criminal penalties. Now, Kevin Hart's attorney, uh, by the name of Dante Mills, explained that an unknown individual claiming affiliation to Tasha Kay's blog reached out to someone on his team. Now, that person allegedly working on Tasha Kay's team stated that they conveyed an intent to publish a damaging story on social media, quote unquote, the story. However, they declared that Hart could avoid the public seeing the story if he paid them $250,000. Now, the document filed in the courts said that it falls under the penal code section 518 which gives rise to both criminal and civil liability against you or anyone involved in the efforts to extort Mr. Hart. Now, we're also finding out that when his team was reached out, basically asking him to bury the story for $250,000, Kevin Hart had actually sent that to the police. Now, Kevin Hart's attorneys also added that in advance to your threatened publication of the story, quote unquote, uh, you posted a teaser with Mrs. Shakes. And for reference, this was the teaser that Tasha Kay had published. Now, they stated it was posted on her YouTube, which clearly was intended as a threat sending a message to Mr. Hart's team that the more detailed story quote unquote would not be published if and only if the ransom was paid. Now it doesn't look like Tasha Kay or her attorneys have applied to this lawsuit that was filed. Now in the coming days when more of the filings come out we're going to see if Tasha Kay actually attempted to extort Kevin Hart for the total of $250,000. I'm not a lawyer but another day another Tasha Kay lawsuit. I read the 21-page extortion lawsuit Kevin Hart has filed against Tasha Kay, and I'm going to recap it for you. So the lawsuit is Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart Enterprises against Maisha Shakes, who the lawsuit says was Kevin Hart's personal assistant from August 8, 2017 until October 22, 2020, as well as Latasha Kibi, who we all know is Tasha Kay, and Kibi Studios. And it specifically notes that Tasha Kay has a, quote, established history of posting defamatory and otherwise improper content regarding celebrities. There is also a list of defendants 1 through 20 that the lawsuit says were agents, employees, representatives, or co-conspirators that once their true names are learned, the lawsuit will be updated with those names. Okay, so on to the facts of the lawsuit. It says that Maisha Shakes signed a confidentiality agreement which they include a copy of, on August 8th, in which she expressly agreed that she would not directly or indirectly, verbally or otherwise, publish, disseminate, disclose, or cause to be published, disseminated, or disclosed any confidential information to any person, firm, or entity whatsoever. It also lists what they consider to be confidential information, which the agreement says is business operations, business ideas, techniques, methodologies, and business relationships. And then on October 22nd, 2020, Maisha entered into a mutual release and release meaning she stopped working for Kevin Hart. And it says mutual, so no indication of why she left or if there was any bad blood, just that it was a mutual release. And on that date, Maisha also entered into an NDA agreement with Kevin Hart and his companies. And the NDA is attached. The NDA calls for Kevin Hart to pay Maisha $30,000 for a period of three years, along with some other considerations. And in return, the NDA specifies that private and confidential information, which is not generally known to the public or readily ascertainable by proper means by others, is subject to reasonable efforts to maintain its secrecy pertaining to Kevin Hart, his companies, or his family. 
It also states that Maisha shall not disclose or disseminate confidential information to any person whatsoever. So basically, she wasn't supposed to say nothing. So apparently, Tasha K interviewed a former personal assistant of Kevin Hart, and that one dropped things in the video. Now, from the court case, as you've heard, um, the former assistant was under an a non-disclosure agreement so i think after she stopped working with him she's supposed to be paid thirty thousand per year for three years so i think the non-disclosure the extra non-disclosure agreement is for three years so she'll be paid thirty thousand per year after she has stopped working so that she does not leak the secrets that she has been able to um hear or know about while working for him now the first thing in my mind when i saw that was now wow excuse me why is why are they still paying her after she has quit what is going on in a circle that she he doesn't want her to talk about and why do celebrities have assistants that are not like their person because it's just somehow that you be an assistant to a celebrity you're supposed to take that person as your person and even after you've quit if the person is not doing anything illegal illegal like on the somebody like doing things that cassie talked about if it's just some personal personal things like they say cheating and the rest i don't really think you're supposed to like just open your mouth because the personal assistant is supposed to be your person it's supposed to be someone that you trust even after the person um has left your employment i i don't know i don't know if there's no ethics in the personal assistant industry or something because it's scary honestly i looked at it like what so if i'm a celebrity like and I need a personal assistant. I uh, I cannot be free with the personal assistant because who knows what will happen if the personal assistant decides, oh, I'm too big to be your personal assistant, uh, or oh, and I want to leave. Then next thing, the person is going about doing interviews, and we say, oh, this person used to sleep on one side of the bed. This person used to not brush her teeth in the morning or something like that. And I'm like, I didn't, I don't, I don't know. This is me just talking. I don't know. But I don't, ah, I don't like that. I don't like the aspect of the for ex personal assistant um going to go and be spilling what she's not supposed to spill on Tasha K's channel. Any which way, um, from what the court documents are saying, somebody called and was saying that if he doesn't want the interview to be uh, published, um, that he, he needs to pay two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, dollars and that is extortion which is illegal you guys i've got the actual cease and desist letter that kevin hart's lawyer sent tasha k back in november this is before the lawsuit was filed and before the uh, actual full interview with his personal assistant his former personal assistant went up on her youtube channel and uh, this is pretty typical lawyerese here telling tasha k that she better mind her uh, p's and q's here and says that he's uh, writing and regarding your recent and ongoing violations of civil and criminal law and that's the big thing he here he really talks about criminal liability here and it says in the uh, complaint that we saw and that was filed in los angeles county superior court the civil lawsuit that kevin hart has contacted the police about this so it's kind of a question of whether there's actually a police investigation into this but uh they the lawyer is pretty blunt in his letter here. He says, we understand the story to be an interview with Mr. Hart's former personal assistant that supposedly includes scandalous assertions against him. We note that Ms. Shakes has a documented history with law enforcement in matters involving other high end other high profile individuals it says in advance of your threatened publication of the story you posted a teaser with miss shakes on youtube which clearly was intended as a threat sending a message to mr hart's team that the more detailed story would not be published if and only if the ransom is paid this is when the extortion stuff comes in i don't know i just don't understand why tasha k is involved in this kind of mess 
again because I know for a fact she was involved with some issues with Cardi B and Cardi B won and the court awarded her three million dollars or so and Tasha K, I don't think has paid that three million dollars to now. I saw some news saying that Cardi B uh, accepted Tasha K's apology this year. I know that the whole case has been on for some years. Now, man, you have been dragging her before I knew, Nikki. I've been dragging that bitch. Why? Because she thinks that she's going to run my platform. She want me to delete videos. Well, you to give me a check. You want these, delete, these videos deleted. You got to give me the money that I'm supposed to make off the videos. <laughs> or more. Because it's residual income. These videos, when they get in the search, they go for years. So you got, to, you got to pay for that. You want shit down on my platform? You got to pay for that. This is a business over here, huh? <laughs> but knowing me, I find a way to still give it to you. I may not use her name, but I'll be like, there's this rapper. <laughs> there's this rapper. We're in business. You want this shit down? You need to rub me my money. But she replies back with my tweet and says, damn, she's going to be doing Fat Joe features forever like Remy Ma. Sorry, sis. And she scratched out my name. Why you scratch out my name, girl? Everybody knows who you're talking about. I heard you was on live this morning talking about you got to be careful because you're in court with a blogger. The audacity of Tasha K to owe Cardi B $4 million and post this on Instagram. She said, look, sis and law, I know you need that because work is slow for all of us right now. But right now, I ain't got it. But let your lawyers know that when I'm up, you gone, be up, and stuck. You get first dibs after this IRS bill gets paid. Then she posted her Discover Amex bill back in current taxes. She owes $111,000. Her Bank of America card is $300. She owes $54,000 on her truck. And then the $4 million is at the bottom of the list. That's not even the worst part. So somebody commented and said, she definitely doesn't need it, but you shouldn't have lied on that lady. She goes in the comment and said, ain't nobody lie. She just won. Money wins in the end. And I'm like, girl, didn't you just get sued for defamation? What are you doing? Listen, I'm about to go to bed, but let's get into this Tasha K versus Cardi B T. So Cardi B is accusing Tasha K of embezzling money, allegedly. So this went down after Tasha K used Takeoff's death to make a dig at Cardi B. So Cardi B said, since you want to be funny for comments, I'm going to make sure your kids don't go to college. Ooh, girl. She already done had herses. So Cardi B made this long post. You can pause to read it. She's basically saying she's going to collect her $4 million since you want to run your mouth. Now, you guys remember how Tasha K attacked me on the internet and sent her minions after me, allegedly? And threatened me, and now she's silent. I wanna see you in court, bitch. You're embezzling, embezzle. Yeah, bitch, you're embezzling, bitch. You're gonna go to jail. He said, if you hide any money, you're gonna get in trouble by the court, bitch. You're going, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Yeah, you're going to jail. Cardi B accepts Tasha K's apology after she begs her for forgiveness. So Tasha K was on live basically crying, asking Cardi B to forgive her, you know, uh, uh, took some accountability, said that she was wrong for what she did to Cardi B, said she was wrong for what she said, you know, said that she basically would not be speaking on Cardi B anymore, you know what I'm saying? I don't like how I got fooled a couple of weeks ago. Was it a couple of weeks ago? I don't know. My time has been I don't like how I was fooled a couple of weeks ago. Some people just never change. Never, never, never change. And you want to know something? I don't like I don't like what people be doing to Will Smith. I be feeling like Will Smith is very unproblematic. And I feel like he got like a nice heart. And that's the thing. I found out that Will Smith is a Libra. I always said this, like Libras, we be getting tried, we be getting tried. And then when we outburst, we outburst so fucking heavy 
that we become the the ones in the wrong because when we when we throw that outburst after we get so much, our sh we we go so crazy that people be like, oh my god, what the? Oh, this bitch is really crazy. Oh, this nigga is fucking crazy for real. And I feel like y'all y'all doing that to Will Smith. And I don't like that some people fucking change. I'm so tired of people picking on that man. Dead ass. And like, I feel like, I'm not, it's not even, uh, your job as a journalist, you should, you should like be able to detect whether somebody is bullshitting or not. Cause anybody could say something about anybody. Look what happened to me in 2018 when a bitch that I never, that I don't even, I, I didn't even know her fucking name. Was saying that she know me, that she did, she went to my house. Anybody could say a fucking fake story about you and people gonna fucking fake believe it. So it should be your job to detect whether something is, is a lie or not. Or like to have any type of proof, any type of evidence. And it's so that like somebody could put something so, so fucking salacious out and not think about like oh well how is this gonna affect this person's mental health how is this gonna affect somebody's day is this worth me fucking up somebody's mind is it is it is it is it worth for them to go through something like damn why me why i'm always in some shit? like shit is not worth it so i don't know why she got herself involved in another issue now i don't know if she she covered up a basis and uh, this suit by Kevin Hart might not go anywhere. It might end up being settled out of court or something. But I don't know. I feel like she's um, pushing the boundaries. I just feel like maybe she should go back to her commentary um, style and not involve herself in getting guests and looking for digging for things even though that will make her pop more because from what i heard the interview is not on youtube so you can't watch it for free it's on our website and you have to pay i think about 12 dollars um to actually get access to the interview so i think she's trying to set up herself outside youtube so i guess that's what she's trying to do but Let's see what happens with this um, court case or suit or whatever that Kevin Hart is uh, filing against her. Any which way, guys, I just want to hear your thoughts about the whole situation. Do you think that Tasha K is innocent in this issue? Do you think what the um, former assistant did was right? Do you think Tasha K is pushing the boundaries with this whole issue and getting um assistant do you think that video she did where she was talking about the fact that um she's not being paid by heart production or whatever and so she's going to get her money somewhere else or something like that listen heartbeat studios i'm sorry and i hate to do this to them too listen i was just down there at the earthquake show and heartbeat studios a nice studio and i get it they were very hospitable they got cheesecake factory for me you know they, they invited me on cyrus xm radio you know gave me a platform but um, you know fortunately i have nobody over there at heartbeat is paying my salary okay and hers either nope <laughs> and when you don't pay we have to get money by any means necessary so the assistants are assisting okay do you think it was right do you think that was what kind of annoyed um kevin had and he just said okay they are going to file a suit against her so i would love to hear your comments please leave your comments in the comment section let's get this discussion popping um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you are not yet subscribed and you like videos such as this please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you notified anytime i upload videos now with all that said thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the next one bye